After working with over a thousand students when it comes to great communication, content, and messaging, one of the biggest things that I see people come into our program or our ecosystem uh, thinking is that great messaging and, and communication comes down to frameworks. If I learn a language pattern, if I learned a certain framework, then my messaging will become successful. And although those things can help, and I have a ton of them inside of our program, and I use a lot of different language patterns and frameworks as, as well inside of our messaging, if we're not able to fill up those frameworks and those language patterns with depth, with specificness, with real emotions, with real actions and mistakes that people are making, then they're still going to fall on deaf ears. So what I wanted to do in this episode is talk about something in depth that I never really talked about before. We do talk about it inside of our program, but to me, this is one of the most powerful invisible elements when it comes to messaging. And that topic is mastery. So keep on listening. Hi, I'm Brandon Lucero, and you are about to experience the new way to thrive in business, entrepreneurship, and life by leaning into who you are, what you love, and standing up for what you want to create. Get ready because this is where we go against the grain, say no to outdated society norms, and we say yes to change in order to create a happier, more fulfilled world. Welcome to the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast. Today is my very first episode from Flagstaff, Arizona. We finally made the move. Um, I don't know how much I've talked about it on the podcast, but we have decided to leave California, my wife and my family, and uh, relocate to Flagstaff, Arizona. And this has been, it's been like a year long journey from the moment of deciding we don't want to be in California anymore to coming here. And um, our very first experience inside of Flagstaff honestly wasn't great uh, because we came right in the middle of winter. Everything was dead. No one was out. And we're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> we thought this town was going to be amazing. Um, and then we came back in the spring. We're like, wow, this is such a different town. And now we're here in the summer and it's like an unbelievable mountain town. And we're so happy to be here. Um, so this is my very first episode. We're in Airbnb for about three weeks before we move into our um, new house, it's being remodeled. We're getting some new floors and paint and stuff done. And so um, I have a makeshift office. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see a big, huge fake plant behind me and um, some random window. But this is, will be my station for the next three weeks. And today I have a really cool episode planned for you guys. Um, we are gearing up to open up enrollment to the New Generation Mastery Program. It is our signature program. We will be opening up the doors in September. And I wanted to talk about this theme of mastery. And this is, you know, obviously it's the name of the program. It's called um, New Generation Mastery. And there's a reason why, but I haven't talked a lot about why we focus on mastery inside of the program. And today we're dedicating an entire episode to that. So I'm really excited. I'm really excited to talk about that. I'm really excited to finally, after a couple of weeks of not producing any episodes to get in here and give you guys an episode and um, the altitude up here is very interesting too. It's 7,000 feet of elevation. So I was telling Matt before we started recording, I'm like, I, dude, I don't know if I'm going to be able to <laughs> podcast up here. It feels like I'm always out of breath. Um, so we'll see how it goes. But let's dive into today's episode. Uh, today, we're going to be talking all about mastery and messaging. And I think now more than ever, mastery is a necessary part of messaging. And I think a lot of the reasons why people are not making sales, are not getting their content seen, are not feeling like they're being heard or um, aren't just able to stand out is because they actually lack mastery inside of their content, their messaging, uh, inside of their brands and inside of their, their companies. And here's kind of what I mean by this, um, just to kind of break it down, is that what happens with most people is, is when we have an, an education style business, so you're like a coach or you sell an online course or you have a program or you're teaching some kind of expertise or you're teaching your knowledge or selling your knowledge, selling information. One of the biggest problems is that with content and sales mechanisms like webinars, your, your copy, um, just everything that you put out stems more from education than it does experience. 
And I think now it's becoming more of a problem. And the reason why it's becoming more of a problem is because more and more people have the same education. And when you're an expert and you have the same education as everyone else, the same certification, the same bachelor's degree, um, the same higher level of education, and then you try to teach all of that education, well, then you sound the same as everyone else because you're not teaching anything new. You're more in what I call the regurgitation mode. And you're just regurgitating things that you've already learned, which by the way, is totally fine. And again, I might say things on this episode that are going to be a little triggering to you, to some of you, maybe, and it might be because you feel like you're being called out. Now, I, I want to just go out and say everything that I'm going to say on this episode is not an absolute. Okay. So it doesn't mean just because you only have education, you're not going to be successful. And it doesn't mean that if you have more experience than someone else, you're also going to be more successful. I'm talking more in, um, a little bit of a generalization, but this is from my own experience and people that I'm watching online, the more that someone's blowing up, the more that someone's content is like hitting people really deep, the more experience that person is, is teaching from, does that make sense? They're, well, they're teaching more from their experience. And again, when we go to base all of our stuff off of education, certifications, bachelor's degrees, all of that stuff, and you just regurgitate it, you start to sound like everyone else. And you actually lack some depth in things that you start to talk about. So you you don't understand the struggles or the emotions, or you're not going to understand what problems may occur. You're not going to understand the emotions of that people have to go through when they go through a specific problem, because you don't have that experience yet. And if we are only focusing on teaching and teaching and teaching and basing that teaching from our own education, we definitely put ourselves at risk of sounding like everyone else. And so I want you to imagine for a second, you just graduated college, you got your four-year degree, and let's say there's a hundred people that went through the same classes as you, they have the same education as you, they had the same professors as you, And all hundred of you go out into the field and someone comes up to hundred of you and says, Hey, I want you guys to create an online course, create content, build a brand online on this topic that you just got your bachelor's degree in out of those 100 people, how, how many of them do you think are going to sound the same? Probably all of them, because the only thing that you can base your content on is the education you just got. Now, if we threw Um, let's just say, let's just say it was a medical degree or something like that. And you just got your medical degree. You went to medical school. You're competing now with a hundred doctors, putting out content, teaching all that stuff. And then we throw a doctor in the mix who has 20 years of experience and thousands of patients that they have treated. And they go into the mix with those 100 medical students who just graduated and said, we want you to create content that's going to help people from your education, your experience, whatever it is, whatever knowledge you have in your brain. I'm willing to bet, like if I was a betting man, I would put my money on the doctor's gonna create deeper, better content that's gonna speak to people deeper, it's gonna help people deeper. Why? Because he has the experience of 20 years, thousands of patients. He's discovered things that the medical students haven't discovered yet. He's understanding problems that are gonna come up that they don't teach in medical school. He's going to understand that sometimes, you know, medicine is going to be individualized to a a certain person and not everything is in generalizations, not one way of medicine is going to heal a hundred percent of people and you have to adapt and you have to change, but he's discovering things. And when you start to discover things that people haven't discovered yet, you can start to teach things that people haven't taught yet. And that's the goal. And that's why we call our program new generation mastery, because I put a big focus on you getting your own mastery inside of your own field. And this is coming down to this. When when you have it, you have better communication, you have better messaging, you have better content. And honestly, you become a better teacher and you have a better program. So a part of building a business in this type of field, when you have online programs and courses, is you also need to have a really good program that other people can't touch. Because that's when we start getting things like word of mouth. People start sharing your work. They start uh, recommending you to other people. You get this whole organic growth side to what you're doing. And what happens? um, Well, let's go here. 
the ones there, there's a couple ways that we can do this. And so there's a couple ways to move out of this education side of teaching. Um, if that makes sense, or there's a way to create content that's not based just on your education, your certifications and your bachelor's degrees, which by the way, all of that stuff is necessary and will help you. It's not going to hurt you to have more certifications. It's not going to hurt you to, um, to go get another degree if that's what you want to do. It's not going to hurt you to learn from other people. It's not going to hurt you at all. More knowledge is, is always going to benefit you. Where it becomes a problem is that when that's the only thing you focus on, and there are so many people and even people inside our program that will wait to put out a piece of content, that will wait to make an offer, that will wait to go do a webinar, that will wait and wait and wait and wait because they don't want to fail. They don't want to do it wrong. They don't want to mess it up. But you're not doing any of that stuff. You're actually learning and gaining a mastery of what is necessary. And I'll tell you right now that I, I will attribute one of like there's many things that have attributed to me finally becoming successful after years of doing this. One of them is, is that I'm a little impatient. Like I'll go through a course and I'll get halfway through it. I'm like, I just want to go do it. I want to do it. I want to do it. I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to test. And that has been one of my biggest strengths because it's allowed me to learn. It's allowed me to try. It's allowed me to gain a deeper mastery. If anything, my biggest, um, I guess Achilles heel is that I hate formal education. Like, well, let me put it this way. I, I hated school. I hated college. I dropped out. I didn't like it. I didn't like formal education. Even today, like I, it, it's a struggle for me to even sit down and, and read a book, partly because I just get so excited. I want to go implement what they're talking about. Um, I also have three kids in a, in a business that I'm running. So my time is very limited. I usually will do audio books, but my biggest thing is that I don't base a lot of what I teach on formal education. I've never taken an, an actual NLP class. Although I hear that a lot of our teachings are, are similar to a lot of things they talk about in NLP. The closest thing to an, an any sort of formal psychology or messaging or communication course or learning that I have is, um, learning slide of mouth patterns from Jim Fortin and that's it. Um, everything else has just been based off of experience. So you do need um, both. And here's the reason why you need both is that <clears throat> when you have your formal education, you have the certifications, you have the degrees, I found that there's four different ways you can take that education and, and combine it with experience to create different types of content. And so what I see out there right now, and there might be more than just these four, but this is just my observation. Um, the ones really soaring to the top are the ones that are are the ones actually teaching other people. So when you look at formal education or you look at a certification or you look at like a college course, whatever you're they're teaching you, I think a lot of people just assume that's the way it is because it's in a college, it's in a university, it's um, coming from a certification or something. They just think, okay, that's just the standard. That's just that's just the way it is. And what they fail to realize is that someone created that standard. Someone at some point discovered this is how we do something and it became the standard. But if we look back even just a hundred years, which is not that long ago, and we look at like the formal education of the medical field back then, they're doing things that we would, that are dangerous, that are actually causing harm to people, but that was the standard. And then someone at some point came through, made a new discovery, had more experience, treated life as a science experiment, made new discoveries, and then the standard starts to evolve. And so the way I look at myself is I don't really want to be the one who is constantly consuming more certifications and standards. I want to be the one who's creating a new standard. Because when I start to create a new standard, then I become the one who's teaching everyone else. And if I become the one teaching everyone else, I have no competition because everyone's learning from me. I'm the one leading the space, changing the space. And there are people out there that are doing that. Um, you know, Alex Hermosi is someone that I just discovered pretty recently who does that as well. He talks about offers and sales, and he's not the first person to ever talk about offers and sales, but because of his vast experience, he's able to teach new discoveries that he found along the way which actually makes him now the leader because he's discovering things that people haven't, haven't discovered yet, which allows him to teach things that others haven't taught yet. So he's becoming the one who's actually sitting less inside of the, let me gain more education space. And he's sitting in the, let me gain more experience space 
But what happens is he becomes the, pe- the person leading the people who are saying, let me sit more in the education space. And again, we need both. But that's one way that you can start to shift how you look at your messaging and your experience and, and your mastery. The number, the other way that I see people doing this is they actually teach application versus education. So what I mean by this is if we look at the holistic psychologist, for example, she's talking about concepts that she didn't invent, you know, like she's talking about fight or flight, the the fawn response, nervous system stuff, a lot of stuff that's been around for a while. Okay. She's not, she's not really like, she is making discoveries. She is teaching things that people haven't taught yet, but a lot of her foundational stuff does come from formal education. But what she's doing differently in her content is she's teaching people how to apply the education to their life in a way they've never heard it before. And that's huge. If we focus on how do we get someone to apply something that can be more beneficial than then just teaching them something. So let me give you an example. Um, she talks a lot about like, you know, let's just talk about fight or fl- flight or, f- or fight response. And let's talk about nervous system. If I'm an entrepreneur and I'm having a lot of like fight or flight issues, I'm full of like anxiety. I can't really post anything. I get, you know, like, um, really like freaked out and just scared when someone leaves a hateful comment, I get haters. I'm constantly in this fight or flight response. And I read this book about fight or flight, but it's talking so much in generalizations that I can't figure out how it applies to me in my specific scenario. It doesn't really do me any good, but let's say the holistic psychologist comes along. She does an Instagram post and she says, here's how the flight or flight, or this is, I don't know why this is so hard for me to say flight or fight response. Here's how the flight or fight response applies to an entrepreneur who gets hateful comments. Here's how to deal with it. Here's how it, And now I can see, oh my God, this is how this concept applies to me specifically. And so if we start to focus on content that helps people apply higher level concepts in education to their specific scenario, and they finally get it differently, that's incredibly valuable. So that's another way to take your education and apply it to content in a way to stand out, to help people in different ways. And again, I'm just going to say it again. I know I've said it a million times already. None of this is an absolute. It doesn't mean you need to be all in experience, all in education, all in application, all in discovering new things. We want, we want a little bit of all of it or a little bit of multiple of those things. Okay. So I, I don't want you to start shifting all of your content to just being focused on application and then some of it being just, or all of it on discoveries. We want a little bit of all of it. Um, this kind of moves me to the next point. Number three which is teaching from depth is also something that's helping people take off really fast right now. Uh, Alex Ramosi is someone who I, I would consider teaches from depth. And when we, and here's what I mean by teaching from depth is that we help people realize things that they haven't realized before. And this is kind of what thought reversals do. Um, this is just bringing, you know, realizations to people like why problems exist in their life, why, um, um, they're not able to do something, uh, even though they've tried a million times. Um, it's going back, even what I just talked about earlier is giving them realizations they never realized before is how higher level concepts apply specifically to them is another way to do that. But if you give people these ahas, it's another way to take education and move it to a way that's going to help you stand out. And then the last one is again, another one that I've talked about, which is making, uh, new discoveries that people haven't discovered before. And also combining things that haven't been combined before is another way that I've seen people take education and apply it to something new. Uh, So to give you an example, Jim Fortin obviously is a good friend of mine. He was one of my first mentors. He was also a client for a while. But one of the reasons why he takes off or, well, he took, there's multiple reasons why he took off, but he's doing really well. And his teachings combined brain science ancient wisdom and subconscious reprogramming, which most people will teach one of those three and become experts in one of those three. But he actually has a ton of mastery and experience in all three and has figured out how all three of them actually work together to bring even deeper results to other people. And so although he's taken formal education from all three of those, 
He's combined the formal education of all, th all three in a way to create a very unique style of education that people haven't heard before. Therefore, he stands out. So he's able to start combining things that people haven't combined before, which puts him in, in his own unique field. But I do want to say that you have to also understand that Jim has 20 to 30 years of experience with formal education in each one of those three things. And so there might be people that look at Jim and go like, he's just talking about subconscious reprogramming. He's just talking about ancient wisdom. He's just talking about, you know, um, brain science. And what they don't realize is that he has 30 years of experience with ancient wisdom, working with his brother-in-law, shaman, doing different ceremonies all across the planet, inside the pyramids, um, different energy points across the world. Like there's deep experience that he has when it comes to ancient wisdom. He has multiple degrees when it comes to like brain science, psychology, um, hypnosis, all of that stuff. And so he has all of this experience, all of this formal education, and now he's combining it all together, which makes it a very tough combo for anyone to compete with because he has a lot of experience. He has a lot of formal education in three different areas that he all combined together. For someone to be able to understand his field at the level that he does is going to be very difficult because you have to go through all of that experience. He understands and has worked with patients and clients. So he just has a, he just has a deeper level um, of, of explaining things, of helping people apply things. This is also why another thing that he does really well is he helps people apply these concepts to their everyday normal life. And that only comes with from working with tons and tons of people. Um, another example is Brene Brown. A lot of us know who Brene Brown is. Um, she, she's become way more mainstream in the last couple of years. But before she ever released any teachings, uh, I believe before she teach, taught any formal like teachings, books, you know, put content online, um, she studied relationships for seven years. Like literally just sat down and studied relationships and had experience for seven years to understand things on a deeper level than everyone else can before she ever published any piece of content. When we look at um, the holistic psychologist who we talked about earlier, she is really, she does a really great job of applying psychological um, mindfulness type of concepts to the everyday person. And she's able to um, use what I call kind of like that subconscious self-identifying method, which means that when people see her content, she's able to talk about really deep, um, high level psychological terms and education, but she talks about it from the perspective of the consumer. She's not talking about those topics from the perspective of the psychologist. She's not teaching other psychologists and she understands that, which means that she takes these high level terms, breaks it down into very simple, relatable terms or situations so that when someone reads it, they automatically go, oh my God, that's me. So she will take these high level terms and she'll communicate it in a way where it's a very specific example. It's kind of like, this is why you yell at your kids. Or um, if, if you do this in your adult life and she has very specific examples, this is probably what your parents did and has very specific examples. And she says, that's the so-and-so parenting method or you know whatever it's called. But by going very specific in very specific examples, it gets your subconscious mind to automatically go, that's me, which makes it relatable to you. And now it applies to you. So she's very good at getting you to apply high level concepts to your everyday life that doesn't require you to think or get confused. Uh, Alex Hermosi is another person who has a lot of experience um, selling programs online. He's one of his companies brought to over a hundred million dollars a year, and he's really fine tuned the science of offers. Again, it comes from experience. He's able to talk about offers and frameworks of offers and a process for offers and um, a lot of in his book, he has a lot of like worksheets that you can go through to dial in every element you need to create a really good offer. But that comes from years of experience. Okay. And what all of this boils down to is what I call mastery. And I think because the field, our, our industry is growing so fast because COVID took a lot of offline businesses and had forced them to move online. So we have a lot of like yoga studios who couldn't bring in people. So they'd go online. We have a lot of like uh, doctors who couldn't see patients anymore. So they created courses and programs and 
the awareness of online content went through the roof because people are now we're stuck at home, going online, watching YouTube videos, learning new skills. This whole space of like courses and online programs and online services has gone through the roof, which is great because we have more customers now, but we also have way more competitors. When we have more competitors, we have to figure out how do we stand out. I have found that mastery is the key to that. Mastery is how you are able to, to differentiate yourself from everyone else inside of your content, inside your communication, inside of your messaging. It's how you become relatable to people because you understand what they're thinking. You understand what they're literally doing. You understand what mistakes that they're, they're making. You understand the exact emotions that they're going through. So remember when I just talked about the holistic psychologist, she was giving very specific examples. The only way you know what those examples are is through experience and through your level of mastery. So when I communicate, when I do like a workshop or I write a piece of copy or I write an email or I write whatever, I'm always looking at what concept am I talking about and what are people actually doing, thinking, and feeling when it comes to this concept. And then I'm going to write those specific examples inside of my copy. I'm going to use them in my communication because what it does is it pulls people in. The second I start describing exactly what you're thinking, exactly what you're doing, exactly what you're feeling, your subconscious mind goes, he's talking about me, pay attention. And I could say right now that if you're listening to this podcast with headphones, that you actually are going to retain 50% more information on this podcast. Now that's not a true statement, but the second I said, if you're the type of person who's listening with headphones right now, the second I said that, and if you were wearing headphones, I'm willing to bet your mind, your, your conscious mind perked up. You, you probably went, pay attention. You may have been not totally present. You may have been scrolling on Instagram. You may have been doing something. But the second I started to describe exactly what you're doing this moment, your mind goes on high alert. That's just how the human mind works. It's how we're programmed. Imagine if your content did that. Imagine if your sales mechanisms did that. Imagine uh, if your copy did that. Imagine if everything you did in your communication on, with your brand did that over and over and over again. You're constantly getting the subconscious mind to pay attention to what you're doing. You have people's attention. But to understand what those are, you need a level of mastery. Okay. So we want high contrast content, which means that we're teaching things that people haven't taught yet. We want to get very specific. We want to show people how it applies to them. We want to describe their actual feelings, emotions, and things they're doing. So the way I break down mastery, there's a lot of people with a lot of different philosophies on what mastery is and how to gain it. My philosophy comes down to three things. Um, those three things are obviously experience. But there's a theory out there from um, Malcolm Gladwell called, it's like the 10,000 hour theory or something like that. He has a whole book on it. And he studied a lot of people and talked about how like people like Bill Gates and Wayne Gretzky, um, one of the reasons why they became so suc successful in what they did is because they had more experience doing what they did than everyone else. He talked about how Bill Gates was one of the first people to actually get a, a computer in his hands and he spent more time on that computer than everyone else. Therefore, he understood it better than everyone else, was able to develop new things that no one else could develop. He talked about um, Wayne Gretzky had actual more practice time in his youth than everyone else. And so he breaks down all of these people and breaks down exactly how they were able to gain more experience and how to gain it faster than everyone else, therefore putting them at the top. And so experience is one of these things that you need. He says that 10,000 hours is kind of that magic number that you need to really master anything. I don't think that there's a line in the sand that means that like as soon as you cross a certain amount of hours, you now have mastery over something. I just think that it's, it comes down to, um, ex like experience. It comes down to, um, if you only have 5,000 hours, great. You have 5,000 hours of experience, which means that you're probably most likely not always, but most likely going to be able to have better messaging than someone who has 2,500 hours. And if you cross that 10,000 mark, but then you're competing against someone who has 20,000 hours of experience, well, you're still going to be 10,000 hours less than them. So it's not like there's a line in the sand, but the idea is, is, is pillar number one of mastery. In, in my opinion, the way I look at it is that you need experience and you need a lot of it. 
you don't, there's not a certain amount that as soon as you hit it, like, okay, cool. Now you, you're done. You're good. Um, because here's the thing with mastery is it's, it's always moving. It's always evolving, which means that if you truly have mastery over your craft, your craft and your discoveries will become norms inside of this space. And that's how I look at like our thought reversals right now. Thought reversals are slowly becoming a norm. They're like a staple piece of content that a lot of course creators now use as just as much as they would with like motivational content or how-to content or educational content. People are now referring to, oh, I need thought reversal content. So what will happen is that when you start to have mastery and you start to discover new things, those will become the standards. But then that means the thing that you use to have an edge over one, everyone else becomes a standard. So everyone else starts using it. It's kind of like how Netflix became one of the first streaming sites online. They had mastery over their craft. They were the leader, but then now Hulu and Disney and, um, I, I don't know, Peacock and like all of these, these other streaming sites came on and then they became the norm, right? So then what Netflix did is they started producing their own content. So now they became like a production house. And so now they're creating their own TV shows and their own movies. And then all of a sudden, Prime started doing the same thing. All of a sudden, Hulu started doing the same thing. So they're really kind of leading the space. But when you lead the space and you have more experience than everyone else, it will slowly become the norm, okay? So that's number one, is, is the, the, the 10,000 hour rule or basically experience. That's the first thing we need um, to mastery. The next thing that we need to focus on uh, is what I, is pillar number two of mastery. And this is alignment or Dharma. This is like your purpose. I truly believe that if you have the most amount of hours of experience on a certain field or niche or topic, and you don't enjoy it, someone with less hours can come in and outmaneuver you. Uh, the way I look at it is, is soccer was never my favorite sport growing up. I was the kid who was like picking flowers in the middle of the field and the ball is like rolling past me and my parents are screaming at me like, get up, get the ball. Hated soccer was not my sport, but I love sports. I'm very active and, and athletic and I loved baseball and I ran, obviously a lot of you guys know this cross country and track and soccer just wasn't my thing. So if I had 20,000 hours of experience and practice playing soccer and someone had 10,000 hours and they love the sport, they, they just ate it up. Every single minute of their, their day was focused on soccer. That's their purpose. That's their alignment. That's where they should be at. They just have a, they might even have a natural skill to that, to, to soccer. And typically what I find is when you have a natural skill to something, you generally start to like that thing. And so it doesn't matter if I had 20,000 hours more than someone else. I didn't have a natural skill for soccer. It wasn't really something that I enjoyed. Someone with less hours will be able to come in and become a better soccer player because they're just naturally gifted at it. It's what their purpose is. It's what their alignment is. And so there are a lot of business owners out there right now who are struggling with their messaging and struggling with their content because they're in the wrong industry. They haven't realized they need to pivot. They need to shift. They need to change. And so in 2017, when I was teaching YouTube and teaching Facebook, I realized I, I don't like this. I don't like it anymore. I, it doesn't matter how many hours or how good I'm at it. At how good I am at like ranking videos and talking about YouTube marketing. I don't want to do it anymore. And if I don't want to do it, I'm not lit up by it and I'm not passionate about it. It will reflect my content. It will reflect my passion or reflect how I show up for my students It will reflect how often I push out content. So you have to pay attention. If you want true mastery over something, you have to pay attention to when it's time for a pivot. You have to pay attention to your Dharma, your purpose. You have to be in alignment with, with what you're doing. And when you combine those two things together, you start to take off faster than anyone else when you have a lot of experience in something that you're lit up by and passionate about. Um, and what I will say is that you have to understand that purpose for most people is not one thing. And I think we're sold on this idea that we need to find our purpose and our life is centered around one main purpose. And from everyone I've worked with and from my own life, I've found that to be exactly the opposite of what actually happens. And the example I give is like when I was five years old, my purpose was not helping people with messaging and communication and finding their power and all of that stuff. My purpose when I was five years old was to do whatever I did when I was five years old, play in the dirt, go have fun, learn, whatever. That was my purpose in that moment. 
My purpose has shifted, has shifted multiple times, and it will continue to shift. My purpose in this moment right now is also to be a parent to, to three um, wild, crazy kids. And I know that when they get older, that won't be my purpose anymore because they will be off living their own lives. And so purpose always evolves and it will evolve inside of your business. And sometimes if you're stuck in a plateau, your content's not really hitting, it's because you're either doing something you've always done, you're doing something that makes you money, um, um, or you've, you're doing something that you have a lot of formal education in and you feel like you need to stick with that because you dedicated most of your life to it, which I, I actually find a lot. A lot of people have degrees in certain things that, okay, I'm going to go off on a tangent because this, to me, this is such BS. I don't understand how an 18 year old is supposed to decide what they want to do for the rest of their life. And that's the way the education system is set up. That's how college is set up is like, even if you don't know what you want to do, go to college, pay like a hundred thousand dollars, decide what you want to do for the rest of your life. And I just don't understand how an 18 year old is supposed to decide to do that. And what I find is a lot of people will make a decision. Then they come out of college, they're paying off student loans, and then they feel stuck and forced and obligated to do what they got their degree in, which was something they decided when they were 18 years old. And when you're 34, 35, 40, you, they still feel forced to do the same thing because now you've dedicated another 10 years of your career towards towards it. And then people end up living miserable lives. Well, that, that, might, that might be too harsh, but they're just not lit up to wake up every morning to go do what they want to do. And one of the best things I've ever done is listening to what I want to do, what feels good, and just go and do it. And the money has, has always followed. And so we need to stick into alignment and with our dharma and not get so caught up in what has happened in the past. We don't let the past dictate our future and your purpose will always change and evolve. And I do find that when you listen to it, you sit in the silence, you quiet the thinking mind, and you do what you feel is best and what you want, you let your intuition guide you, you typically will go into an area where you blow up really fast. And that's kind of what happened to us about four years ago as I shifted what we were doing and I didn't get stuck in what I had been doing for the four years previous. And we kind of blew up to the level we're at now. So those are the first uh, two things. There's the 10,000 hour theory or experience. Uh, there's also making sure that we're in alignment or following our dharma um, or our purpose in this moment. And then number three, is something that I think a lot of people um, miss or no one really talks about, which is um, it's either just, I, I call it improving change, but you can call it discovery, which means that you're in an, an area or field that you have a lot of experience in. Um, you are in per, your purpose and your dharma and your alignment, but you're also looking at how you can improve the space. You're looking at what are the standards? Do those standards cause problems? Why are problems existing for people? How do I create a new method? How do I create a new framework? How do I create new IP? How do I create something different that is better, faster, easier, um, helps people on a deeper level? And we start to improve our space. So if you want mastery, you got to have the experience because without the experience, you can't go and improve anything. You can't go see what, what, what needs to be improved or how to improve it. You also need something that you are aligned with. And when you start to combine all three of these things together, you start to have a level of mastery. It starts to make you a little bit different. You start to communicate things different. You're making discoveries. You're able to talk to the emotions and the mistakes and the feelings and the actions that people are literally making right now because you have all of that experience. You're lit up. You're here to help. You're here to serve people because you're in your alignment and you're in your purpose. It comes natural to you. It comes easy to you. You just get things. You can see things that people can't see. Kind of like how I look at messaging. The way I'm mostly self-taught, I'm like, I would say I'm 95% self-taught because I would read a book and I would look at how I'm feeling and I would say, what did the author do to make me feel this way? And I go, oh my God, that's what they just did. So I'm able to see things that other people can't see when it comes to messaging. I just get it. I understand how to communicate. I don't have any explanation other than I just get it. It's just how my brain works. I see it. I understand it. And then uh, with the improving change, I'm able to discover new things. I look at how do I create a framework around this, a methodology around this? How do I create a new standard inside of our space? And that is mastery. When you have all three of these things together, you're able just to hit a whole different level that people can't hit. 
And the reason why I wanted to do this uh, was because I think this is one of the most vital or one of the reasons I want to talk about this on today's episode is I think it's one of the most vital um, elements to great content, messaging, sales, um, and in communication. But it's one of the things that most people either skip, are not aware of, or don't talk about. It's one of those like big, huge, like gorillas in the room that no one really seems to address or knows that they need to address. And if you guys truly understood the value that this has and how important mastery is over your work and having a successful business online and honestly changing people's lives, then you wouldn't be so worried about what haters are going to think or what other people are going to think. You wouldn't worry so much about quote unquote getting it right because there is no right. There is no wrong. There just is. You just put something out there, results happen, it's data, you take it, you analyze it, you don't attach any meanings to it and you adjust the next time around. And so if you truly understood that in order to have mastery, you have to put things out, that you're gonna have to take some risks in content and some of it may flop and some of it may get haters and some of it may not resonate at all, some of it will. And that failing literally is required in order to have mastery, then if you guys truly understood all that, you wouldn't be waiting to put out your content. You wouldn't be caught up in fear this is completely necessary for you to be able to grow a business online. So if you want great communication, you want great messaging, you want great content, it needs to come from a place of mastery. And like we talked about in the very first pillar of mastery, Maxim or Maxim, uh, Malcolm Gladwell says that from his findings that you need about 10,000 hours those 10,000 hours can take you years. It could take you two years. It could take you one year. It could take you six months. It's up to you how long those 10,000 hours take. If it were me, and I guess I'm giving you my own experience now because this is what I did. I don't want those 10,000 hours to take five years. I want to help people now. I want to grow a business now. I want to go out and change people's lives now. I want to do it now. What's the point of waiting five, 10 years? And honestly, some of you may never even get there. This is going to be my tough love, my harshness, but it's, it's, it's the truth. Some of you guys have something inside of you that is an urge, a desire. It's your intuition. It's probably your Dharma telling you, Hey, knock, knock. Hey, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Go and do it. And some of you will put in a minimal effort, a small try. You'll study and you'll get stuck in that education loop and take more courses and more education and not actually go out there and do the very first pillar of mastery, which is go get the 10,000 hours or the experience that you need. And it breaks my heart. And that's kind of why I do what I do is to, to help you guys get out there and, and go put out the work. That's why the program means so much to me is because I want to break down those beliefs and get you guys to go out there and, and help people because there are people out there that uh, need your help. You have experiences that you've gone through. You've gone through painful moments in your life that you could help people speed through. You could help people get through. There's a lot of pain out there. And you, if you're listening to this podcast, most likely have a desire to help end that suffering. And I want to help you do it. And so get your butts out there, start putting out content. And if you feel like you need help, get ready because in September, we're opening up new generation mastery. We can help you guys with this on a deeper level. But if you love this episode, I would love to hear your feedback. You guys can send me a DM or just uh, share this episode on Instagram and tag at I am Brandon Lucero. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, thanks guys for listening. I'll, I'll see you all on the next episode. Take care, everyone. Hey guys, thank you so much for checking out another episode of the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, go below, hit the subscribe button and make sure you click on that bell icon and get notified every time we drop a new episode. Now, if you're looking for the show notes, we have them linked underneath this video as well as our social media handles and some links to free training and offers that we drop from time to time to help you guys even further. So go check those out if you're interested and thank you so much for tuning in to the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast.